Meet Blue and Sweet Girl, a Made It Blue Jay pair that have been together since 2011. There is no other Blue Jay pair that I know better than these two. I've watched them raise several broods over the years and have many wonderful stories I plan to share about this pair. But right now, I want to pick up where I left off with the last bird story video, A Black Cap Chickadee's Story, which I will link up in the right hand corner for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. The day Tawny and Tim's babies fledged, I found Blue and Sweet Girl's fledglings. Here's what I observed over the coming days and weeks. Enjoy. It was as if Blue had deliberately led me to his newly fledged babies. I guess that wouldn't surprise me since I've been present for all of Blue and Sweet Girl's broods since 2011. Maybe they see me as extra help. I found three together. Even though I've seen baby blue jays this young many times, I was still struck by just how tiny they are, not to mention adorable. It turned out that there was another one hidden away. Four babies in total. Last year they had five. Incredible. Male jays are attentive fathers who teach the babies how to fly by communicating to them and then flying back and forth showing them where to go and how to do it. That's what Blue is doing here. I'm always touched by this. One by one, they each get moving. The babies were all spread out now, and I wouldn't leave until I found where each of them were. I felt a little more at ease when I seen Blue and Sweet Girl keeping a lookout. It was a foggy morning. I noticed that the apple tree blossoms were out now. I also saw a pretty spider web with dewdrops on it. When I arrived, I saw two of Blue and Sweet Girl's little ones picking at each other and then the tree. So sweet. Shortly after, all four of them made their way down to explore. In just one week, the little ones have traveled two kilometers and were now down close to the neighborhood where all of the jays of my area meet every summer with their babies. Blue jay babies really love being close to water so they can bathe and get an easy drink. and maybe even catch a fly. Everything is so interesting to them right now. They played around for a little while, but most of the time was spent up in a tree resting. It's tough work being a baby blue jay. During this stage, fledglings have pink feet, which don't turn to the dark color until they reach the juvenile stage. As the babies rested, Blue and Sweet Girl search for food to feed them. One little guy was so hungry that he kept begging for more despite already being fed. Sweet Girl's ability to ignore his constant begging is phenomenal. By noon, it was really hot. To cool off, Blue opened his mouth, the bird version of panting. Good thing Blue is close to some water for a refreshing drink and a dip. This morning I noticed that Sweet Girl seems to have a bad foot. She'd keep it held up into her body most of the time. While on the ground, though, she seemed able to use both feet just fine. I've heard that birds have really sensitive feet, so maybe it's just something minor. The little ones are flying around much better these days. I noticed a fledgling hanging around who didn't belong to Blue and Sweet Girl. Its markings were so much bolder and different than Blue and Sweet Girl's offspring. I found out that it was one of Squawky's babies, another Jay I know. 
Blue found some food nearby and arrived to feed one hungry baby right after Sweet Girl did. He's getting all the food. On my way to see Blue and Sweet Girl and their babies, I noticed an odd-looking toad on the ground that I had never seen before. It had striking blue-colored eyes and it looked smooth rather than bumpy. I also saw a black and white warbler. They are so similar to nuthatches with how they climb around. The little ones were very lively and upbeat today. I don't think I saw them rest much at all. They sure love to pick around at trees, chipping the pieces of wood off and then playing with it. I guess it's a good way to learn where to find insects. I love how they watch and imitate each other. One little guy reminds me a lot of Blue, Blue's little mini-me. It wasn't long before he discovered the peanuts I left on the ground. He dove right in. I checked on Sweet Girl to see how her foot was and it seemed fine. She spends a lot of time preening these days because she is molting. I saw Blue pick at Sweet Girl's feathers. Not sure why he did that. She didn't seem to approve, though. Minnie Blue had a good time playing next to a puddle, and he was joined by a friend, Squawky's little guy. It's nice to see him hanging around with other fledglings. The little ones are becoming more independent, finding food on their own. I noticed one of them taking advantage of an easy drink from the morning dew on the pine needles. I noticed Sweet Girl on the ground nearby searching for food. I decided to help her out and laid the bag of food down for her and Blue. They love when I do this. After a little snack, they both went off hiding food away. It's kind of hard keeping up with all the little ones these days because they go off on their own. I left to visit another Blue Jay I know well, Hermozo, to see how he was and found him and Feisty Jay having what seemed like some serious words to each other. I made a series about the drama that went on between these two since winter. I will link it up in the right hand corner for anyone who may be interested to watch. It was getting late so I headed back. I noticed that the showy lady slippers were out. I really love them and wish they were around for longer than they are. There is so much growth now and lots of buttercups. Nearby there was a spider spinning its web. I find these creatures endlessly fascinating. With the web completed it went to the center to wait. It was getting dark and I wondered where Blue and Sweet Girl was. I did get to see one of them, Sweet Girl. As she collected some seeds, the white-throated sparrows sang in the background, setting the mood of the evening. July evenings are such a beautiful time. Sweet Girl was the first one I saw this morning. It's easy to see that she is molting. Some feathers are missing or shorter than the others. She found an insect to eat, and they don't seem to feed the little ones very much these days. Instead, they seem to be more of a protector, keeping watch. They are also more preoccupied with preening because the molt has really set in and it's pretty irritating and itchy. Squawky's family are always around, which means that Blue and Sweet Girl's fledglings are getting well acquainted with them. Here, Minnie Blue in the back is with one of Squawky's. 
These two seem to hang out a lot together, but then again, they all seem to hang out together these days. This is typical of blue jays. Once they reach their independence, the parents leave them alone. For better chances of surviving, it's best that the little ones stick together. Mini Blue is more than comfortable with my tripod now. I always put peanuts on top when I'm not using it, and he sure likes that idea. I'm impressed that he has already learned to hide food away. The next day, I found Joss Sweet Girl with the youngsters. No Blue. I went searching and found him way up in the territory they normally occupy together. This is a sure sign that they are weaning the kids from needing them. He started calling while I was with him. I thought maybe he was calling to Sweet Girl, so I had him follow me down a little ways. It wasn't long before she joined him, but even a few of the little ones came. I guess they aren't quite ready to be on their own just yet. These days, the fledglings are on their own. Mini Blue is the only offspring of Blue and Sweet Girl that I recognize. He comes to me when I whistle and seems to enjoy being around me, especially since he gets peanuts. He's pretty good at catching them too, just like his mom and dad. A part of me wants to work hard to keep building on Mon and Mini Blue's relationship, but another part of me don't want to just because of how time-consuming it is and not to mention how heartbreaking it is if they don't make it. It's tough being a juvenile bird. After spending a little time with him, I left to go look for Blue and Sweet Girl and see how they were. On the way, I came across an adorable rough grouse. I think he wanted very much to get away from me. I also came across a bull moose. Even though there was some distance between us, I still felt quite nervous. Now that I know he is around, it's best to keep that in mind and be extra careful as rutting season is getting close. I found Blue and Sweet Girl shortly after. Their face and head is starting to molt. They will be bald in a few days. Perfect timing this year with raising their babies. I wish their little ones all the best out there. I think I will keep my distance though and focus my attention on the Jays I already know and have established a relationship with. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and have been enjoying this series so far. I plan to put a one bird story video every month. I think it's a great way to get some use of the footage I get out there and tell a little bit about what I've been seeing. Don't forget to thumbs up the video if you enjoyed. Happy birding!